In this video, I'll show you how the Cortic platform and batch analytics application can be used for batch optimization. With a specific focus on how it can be used to monitor batch performance in real time relative to a golden batch. And if we're deviating from that target performance, understand the contributing factors to that variance and how it impacts our product quality. And finally, get recommendations for process adjustments we can make to get our batch performance back on track. So to do this, we'll start with an offline analysis mode using multivariate data analysis, or MVDA for short, on completed batch runs to understand where my batch variance comes from, how it impacts my performance, and what factors cause that variance. We can also use this to construct a reference batch group, or a golden batch, and then move into real-time online monitoring of a live batch where I can compare my batch health, quality attributes, and process parameters to that golden batch I created. Finally, if we detect variants from our target from that golden batch, we can use the knowledge gained in my offline analysis about the relationships between our quality and process parameters and use that information alongside the Quartic Optimizer application to generate real-time setpoint recommendations that will help correct my batch trajectory and get back as close to my ideal performance as possible. This leads to better overall product quality, better results like increased yield, and more consistency between batch runs. So this should give you a good idea of the general capabilities of our batch optimization. So now I'll jump into a demo and show you how this works. So here I'm running a batch process for penicillin fermentation, and I want to analyze my product yield to get a better understanding of what is impacting it. So I'll start off in an offline analysis mode, again using MVDA, and at the top I choose my product and the process that I'm running, and then search the date range for the batches I want to pull in here to get my batch list. Then I'll choose the variables I want to look at for variability, which I'll just choose all of them for now, as well as the variable I want to focus on, my yield. This will perform dimension reduction and give me a nice XY plot showing each one of the batches as a dot with the size representing the yield. So I want to analyze differences between my lower yield batches and my higher yield batches. So over on the left here, we have some smaller dots, lower yield that I'll assign to group A. And then there's also some batches over on the right that are a little bit bigger. These are higher yield batches and I'll select these as group B. So now I'm going to analyze the difference between these lower yield batches and the higher yield batches. So when I click analyze, it's going to give me a list of parameters that are leading to the variation. So this is a ranked list of how much they're contributing to the variance between these two groups, along with trends of these different process parameters for the full duration of the batches. So I can compare my CO2, my temperature trends, and see how these trends compare between the different batch groupings, between the low yield batches in orange and the higher yield batches in blue. So this is all in offline analysis. Then to move to online, I need to deploy the findings here as a machine learning model. So I can choose my higher yield batches group B as my reference group. This is what my batch should look like. And anything outside of this should be flagged as a deviation. So for this, I can deploy this group as an anomaly detection model where variance outside of a certain percentage from the reference group will be flagged, tracked as a deviation event, and we can send out a notification about that. The other option is to do this more of a classification model where None of these are necessarily bad, but we still want to understand if the current running batch is closer to group A, group B, or even a group C or D. And that may give us a better idea of what the yield or product quality might look like. So for that, I could deploy a classification model. Now I've already deployed this as an anomaly detection model. So in the next tab, this monitoring tab is where I go into online monitoring. So here I have my reference group of batches plotted, and then I can compare recent or current batch runs to this group. I'll select my most recent batch, batch 80 here, and it gets plotted alongside my reference group. And I can see how small it is, how low my expected yield is from this batch. And it's also far separated from the reference group, indicating there's significant variance. So to compare the differences between this batch 80 and my reference group, I'll just hit analyze. And this will do a similar analysis to before. And now I can see trends of these individual variables between my reference group in gray, which could also be a golden batch, and the difference between this and my current running batch shown in green. I also get this probability metric, which is the probability that my yield for this batch will fall within the target range from my reference group. Only 14%, that likelihood isn't very good for this particular batch run. 
Now this is one way to compare batches in this multivariate perspective. I can also take a simpler univariate approach using batch overlay trends. So to show this quickly, I'll come back to the Cortic platform into my batch analytics module where I can search for my batches and then choose the process parameters and quality attributes I want to trend and overlay across my batch runs. So I'll choose these two batches, a couple of my parameters, I'll drag these over, and then I click Analyze to trend this. So here I can see my two batches overlaid for those different process parameters I selected. I could put multiple of these on the same chart too. And I can zoom in on my charts and then also overlay this with a reference batch or a golden batch for direct comparison to see how my current profile matches up against my golden batch. Now this one, I'm looking at my concentration, which translates to my product yield. And this one looks relatively close in terms of the absolute value, just with some fluctuation differences. So maybe this was a poor batch to choose since they line up pretty nicely, but you get the idea. We can use this tool to do a quick visual comparison of batch parameters versus a golden batch. Or I can use that multivariate analysis approach for a more complete comprehensive analysis of multiple parameters simultaneously. So now that we've done this online monitoring, the final step is if we're trending off of our target profile, if we're predicting a poor outcome, what can we do about it? At the most basic level, we can notify someone, an operator or an engineer, send them an email about the issue and log it as a deviation event within the platform that you can create a report on. But then we go one step further to prescriptive analytics with Cortex Optimizer application. What corrective action should I take to correct this issue? So we have another video that goes into more detail about how the optimizer actually works. And that video also focuses specifically on yield optimization. So here I'll just show the end result to give you a complete picture of this batch optimization workflow. So in this dashboard in Power BI, I'm monitoring my batch yield in real time in the solid blue. Then I can also predict my yield based on my influencing factors that were determined in my offline batch analysis. So here at the bottom, I can see those top five parameters like temperature and dissolved oxygen. And then at the top, again, I have my predicted yield over to the right of this gray line. And I can see this is going outside of this target profile, this light blue band, which is essentially a confidence interval that if I remain in this band, my final batch yield will be within the bounds of my golden batch or my reference batch. But here, since I'm trending outside of that, to correct this, I'll just toggle on my recommendations from the optimizer here. And this green line is now a corrected profile coming in from that optimizer. So if I make the set point adjustments that are recommended for each of my process parameters shown here next to my standard recipe values, I can get my yield back on track. Note that you may not be always be able to get back to that golden yield, depending on the state of your process, but you can at least make it better. And also as a note, everything I've done here has been yield focused, but this can be done for any batch quality parameter or even for a composite batch health index. So this should give you a good understanding of Cortex batch optimization capabilities, where we can monitor batch performance and quality in real time. If there are some issues that are detected, we can identify the underlying causes of that. And finally, make prescriptive set point recommendations to correct and improve batch performance. This leads to better and more consistent product quality, and all of this capability is ready to go off the shelf and it can be configured and tailored to your specific process and needs. So with that, if you have any questions or like to learn more, please reach out to us here at Quartic AI, and thanks for watching.